Hi, and welcome to the aging face. What is really happening to our face as we age, particularly as we start to hit those menopausal years and postmenopause? And what are inexpensive ways that we can cheat age? What are procedures that can help? And what procedures just don't work and help you look really odd to everyone's eye? Stay tuned. Hi, and welcome to my channel, Clean Beauty Babe. I am Michelle Spieler, an over 25 year professional makeup artist working in television, film, print, corporate video, private clients, and now YouTube. Uh, I, I don't claim to be an expert on, on aging or skincare or procedures, but I wanted to have a talk today with everyone. One, I've had a crazy busy work week outside of the home, so I have had to put I've had to push my summer concealer video, which is going to take a lot of work to film and put it together. So I made a post this week on Instagram and I was having a really good skin day and I was like, I'm having a good skin week actually. Is it my new firming? Um, it, City Beauty sent me a bunch of their firming skincare and I'm like, is it my new firming skincare? Is it that I've been on an estradiol patch for a month? Is it my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter? All of this I bought with my own money, by the way. Um, you know, what? what's going on? Why do I, why am I, why is my skin looking so good? I also have a new foundation on today, which I'll get to at another time. And I said, you know, let's talk about the aging face. Like, who would be interested in hearing that? Oh my gosh, did I open the floodgates. I've had more DMs in the past 48 hours of women saying, please talk about the aging face. So here I am, we're gonna talk about the aging face. Again, I'm not an expert, but I'm going to try to help you and save you time because I follow a lot of experts. I make it my part-time job to research procedures, to follow all the dermatologists and plastic surgeons and injectors on TikTok, on Instagram, um, YouTube, um, reading more into clinical studies and what is effective and what's not. And so we're gonna we're gonna get into that um, today. I'm not here to push anything or or sell anything or. Um, anything at all other than let's just have this conversation. I feel an expert in that I'm 53, about to turn 54 next month, and so I can tell you what's happening to my face and possibly your face, because I feel like as we're in these like early 50s, mid 50s, um, we all kind of start having the same symptoms, okay? So let's just start with the top of the face, okay? Let's just, <laughs> let's just go down. Um, the forehead. The forehead is an area that for most of us stays pretty youthful. Some women get a lot of sun damage on their forehead. I am not one of those women. I do have sunspots on the side of my face here and here, but my forehead has no foundation on it. It's just tinted, uh, tinted sunscreen and it looks nice. Uh, I mean, you can see I have lines but for the most part, I'm real happy with my forehead. What you will see a lot of women do is shoot their whole forehead up with so much Botox that they can't move their eyes or their eyebrows, and so therefore they have no expression lines. When you have no expression lines, you're not deepening those lines. So while it is effective and it does work, when someone is always paralyzed, you know, you just, you never have any, like right now I'm trying to look surprised, or angry, I, uh, there's no expression. So that's something to consider. Like, do you want your face to always be frozen so you have a perfectly smooth forehead? That's fine, but many women don't like that, and so what we have to do is just accept that we're gonna have a lot of expression lines in our forehead, our 11s. Do you see how deep my 11s are? They're, they're deep. Um, and I'm gonna talk more about that another time, but that's something where I really, I hold a lot of emotion right here and they're getting deeper and deeper and my eye goes right to it. 
Another thing that happens as we age, and I've told women this for years because probably starting in my late 30s, women would come to me and go, help, I have these dark circles. Do you see those? These indentations, but they call them dark circles. They're not dark circles. They're, they're dents. Okay, these are dense. Dark circles are usually darkness under the skin that is easy to cover with like a concealer, but these you can't cover with makeup, they're dense. In fact, I'm gonna turn my, um, let me turn, do you, let's see. I don't, what, I'm, you know, I'm in good window light. Okay, there, you can kind of see there. Let me turn this up. You can kind of see the indentations these dents right there, there they are. Do you see those dents under my eye? Okay. Women have been asking me for almost 20 years, how do I get rid of those? You can't, they are dense in our face. And what's happening is as we age, our eyeballs are sinking back into our skull. And we are also losing collagen and elastin. I don't know why God designed us this way, but he did. So. I just learned recently, and I had no idea, but our, but, but our orbital bone, our, our orbital opening, as we get older, gets larger. So that makes sense why we have these deep lines that get deeper and deeper as we get older. They're dense. And then also our nose gets larger as we age, and I know this to be true because I recently posted a really funny video of me from um, when I was 18, 1985, and it was an Indian Earth. Do you remember Indian Earth? And I was doing a really funny TikTok on how I found Indian Earth, and I used it now today in this modern 2021, but I showed a picture of myself on green screen of myself with tons of Indian Earth on my face in 1985. My nose was so cute and uplifted and little and I'd never done anything to my nose. I just was blessed with an, a nice nose. But I know my nose is getting bigger because it's looking much, it's wider, it's longer, this is dipping down. And we know this as we get older, our, our, the tip of our nose starts to sag even. Our ears get bigger. My ears have little creases in them, like little wilted raisins because of sun damage. I never, ever thought to put SPF on my ears and now I'm paying for it. So just as our ears and our nose grow bigger as we age, our orbital bones also expand and get larger as we age, sinking our eyeballs into our eyes, which is why you're gonna see these getting deeper and deeper. Some of you even have a bag and a dent. Now I don't have the bag, I have the deep dent, but some women have like a big puffy bag and then a dent, and the only thing to do with that is surgery. Okay, surgery cannot help these dents in my face. Filler can, but you have to be so, so careful. I follow a lot of injectors, and what I'm seeing is that a lot of women get injections under their eye or right here in their gels. Do you see these little, do you see this little hollow area, this little puckery hollow area? I could get that filled. I found an injector that said, yeah, I can fill that in about 50%. I can fill this in about 50%, but I, I'm, you know, you're not gonna look 30 again. I said, totally fine. I don't need to look 30. I just want to look really, soft and smooth and my eye my eye always goes right to these gels this is my source of contention on my face the gels i can't stand it i don't like the neck either but i can handle the neck it's the gels that make me nuts and some of you reach out to me and say oh my gosh my hooded eye is now so hooded it's falling into my lash line and affecting my vision or other women will say help i have huge deep lip lash you know lip lines and i've never smoked a day in my life and all i say to everyone and, and i hate to say this but the only thing that's going to help any of this ladies is surgery please stop thinking that skincare or makeup is going to correct any of this and I think so many of us are trying to like reverse the clock a little bit, buy ourselves maybe five, 10 more years of looking younger. And that is just not realistic. Um, probably the best, most effective skincare we can use for anti-aging, and everyone agrees with this from plastic surgeons to dermatologists, doctors, skin gurus, pretty much everyone agrees that Retin-A 
or tretinoin acid or retinol is the number one tool for anti-aging, for reversing the clock, for um, erasing some of those sunspots, for maybe lessening a little bit of our lines and wrinkles, but nothing's gonna take away these deep creases between my brows, not even this, okay? There comes a point where we have to stop thinking that any of this is going to reverse us 10, 20 years, it's not. But it's gonna help us look a little bit better, a little bit softer going forward. It might take a little bit of focus off of someone's melasma or someone's like real crinkly lines around the eyes. This can help, but this also makes you photo sensitive. Sensitive. So if you are not committed to using an SPF every single day, including reapplying every two to three hours, I reapply. I'll take some of this and I'll just like go over my makeup and it looks fine. It absolutely looks fine. But if you're not committed to this and be honest, you have to be honest with yourself, then do not start Retin-A, Tretinoin or Retinol because you will thrash your skin, okay? Um, another thing that you can do to sort of, what I don't want to say tight, well, maybe tighten and lift a little bit are these microcurrent devices. Now, there's a lot of controversy on these. I bought this years ago, so no one gave this to me. This is the New Face microcurrent. This is the mini. I got it on QVC. I made payments because it was, you know, an investment. Um, when you actually use this, every day or every other day. It's like a gym for the face. It really truly does lift and tighten those muscles, but you have to be committed to using every day. And honestly, I get a little lazy. So just like my arms are now a little bit flabby because I really haven't been working out as much in the past eight months as I have the past seven years, I've gotten a little bit busy and a little lazy. Same with this, you, this is a huge commitment. Another thing I have is the Nera. Do you see how it's still in plastic? because I knew if I'm not faithfully using this, I'm probably not gonna faithfully use this. So it's still sitting in plastic. This is FDA approved to actually kind of tighten the eye area. Now some women even say it's helped on their forehead lines. Some women have said it's helping on these like parentheses. I don't know, I'll try it someday, but it is FDA approved to tighten the eye area. And so that would be worth it to me to try. I just need to stop being lazy and try it. So these are all like, non-surgical ways to kind of help you feel a little bit better. But again, nothing is going to turn back that clock big time women, nothing. Um, I love frownies. You know, I sleep with these almost every night. I, I actually forgot to wear it last night, but I like to do one big patch right here. Sometimes I do the whole forehead, but really right here because as I sleep, this side of my face falls into this side of my face and then it makes these creases deeper. So I like to wear this for prevention and to kind of help me train my muscles to lay flat during the day. They also make these for lip lines. Um, that's one of the number one questions I get help. I have lip lines and I've never been a smoker. Well, look at how much we move our mouth or, you know, do we drink from straws? I've always been a straw drinker because of lipstick. So these are little tiny um, pads. They feel almost like moleskin and you put them here and here. And when you sleep at night, they kind of prevent you from like, you know, because we do weird things with our face in our sleep. They can kind of help prevent some you know deepening of the lines but they're not going to reverse nothing's going to reverse okay um for for hooded eyes you know we can do some dark smoky makeup and kind of knock back and make it look like we have a crease but if your if your skin is falling into your lash line that is a question for your doctor that personally at that point i would try to um get insurance to pay for it because it's affecting my vision. So I, I'm not trying to talk about this to be negative or to make y'all depressed, but I see so many women every week reaching out to me on YouTube and mostly TikTok, lots of women on TikTok. Help, what do I do for this? Help, I have lines. Help, I have hooded eyes. Help, I have sag. Help, I hate my jowls. Help, I have such huge melasma problems. I don't know what to do. 
you know, really, honestly, you need a dermatologist, you need a plastic surgeon. If you're not willing to go that route, then there's only so much that products can do over the counter, and that's just that's just truth. I'm, I'm sorry to say that. Um, I, women, you know, get upset if I say, oh, I'm so sorry that's happening to your lines. You really are going to have to go and get an eyelid surgery. And they're like, well, I'm never going to do that. Well, then in 10 years, it's going to be far worse than you've ever imagined. And I'm not telling you to get surgery. I'm scared to death right now of surgery. One, I don't have the money. But two, they cut you here. They cut you inside the ear. They cut you at the hairline. I've talked to hairstylists that see all these scars. I follow plastic surgeons, so I see all these scars healing. And then, you know, they pull you this way. They pull you this way. You know, they pull you all the ways. Look how good that looks. But, but you're left with scars and, and right now I'm just, I'm not ready for that. And, and I don't have the money for it anyway, but I'm just, I don't think I'm mentally ready to cut my face open. I'm just not there yet. I'm not against it, I'm just not there yet. Then there's the ponytail lift. This is becoming huge, where they make four incisions in your hairline and they pull everything up like you're wearing a really tight ponytail. And it really, it really kind of is amazing. Cause look, do you see how my, do you see how my jowls went up? But look, do you see? I still have this indentation right here. I still have indentation right here. So they would still go into those areas with your own fat. They, these type of procedures, they like to use the fat from your body to inject in your face rather than fillers. Um, because what's happening with fillers is I actually canceled an appointment, okay? I wanted to get fillers under my eye and right through here for my birthday, my 54th birthday is coming up at the end of July. And it was going to be expensive, but it lasts a year, and when I broke it down from 12 months, I thought, well, I'm worth that a month. You know, it worked out to be like, you know, $150 a month, right? And I thought, well, I could, I, I could do that. I'm worth that. But I have, I'm looking at like no shortage of 20, 80 to 90 foot trees that are dangerously close to my house. I've already lost two trees in my house and I don't want to lose another one. And we've been in the house both times that trees have fallen on us. You know, who's to say we can't have a third fall on us and actually, you know, do serious bodily damage or kill us. So right now my intent is to take trees down. I need new carpet in my house. You know, I need to start saving for a college fund for my daughter. So anytime I think I'm gonna go get a procedure, um, you know, God reminds me of all the things that are really important that I need. And I'm like, oh, you know, but I justify it. Well, but I'm on camera all the time and I'm on social media. Well, no one's twisting my arm to be on camera or social media. And I've had so many women in the last few weeks reach out and say, please don't get fillers and please don't get surgery. And, you know, obviously they're, they're loving and kind and saying, you know, you can do what you want, we'll still follow you. But if you go down that road, then we have no one to, to turn to. Then we have no one who looks just like us and yet is out there representing us. And so I'm very mindful of that, okay? I am very, very mindful that I am a woman with a saggy neck, with saggy gels, with raisiny ears, with um, a hooded eye that's starting to fall in my lash line, with old hands, with damp, you know, tons of sun damage on my chest. I'm aware of, I'm in my 50s and I've had no work done. Now I've taken great care of my skin, really good care of my skin, but I still had a lot of sun damage in Southern California before the 90s started and we really got more into like real sunscreen, okay? And I didn't reapply every day um, on a nor I would reapply at the beach, I would reapply at the pool, but not every day of my life did I reapply. And driving in Los Angeles for hours a day on the freeway, I didn't have sunscreen on my hands, I didn't have sunscreen on my ears, I didn't have sunscreen on my neck or my chest. So. I would do things very differently if I could go back knowing what I do now, but I, but that's okay. So my point is, is that I've done as well as I can and I'm here to represent the women over 40, over 50, over 60 who are telling me I will not inject my face, I will not um, get surgery, I will not do this, this, and this. Now sometimes they just don't want to spend the money on that. 
Sometimes it just comes, comes down to money. And for some women, they're just really, really scared because there's always risks. Even with the very, very best plastic surgeons, there's always risks. I know women who have gone to the best plastic surgeons for an eye job and they can't close their eye all the way. So at night when they sleep, it's slightly open. These are risks you take for vanity. And that scares me. What if I do something to my face and it alters my face forever? Cameron Diaz, the actress, has said that in hindsight, she would not have gotten a facelift because it changed what she looked like and she doesn't really like it. You can't reverse it once it's done. I'm looking into the Morpheus laser. I don't know if you've heard of that, but the Morpheus can kind of like, what it does is it kind of injures your whole face and you have to go through this huge healing process. So you're kind of like stuck at home for a while, which I think why it was so popular during quarantine. But the Morpheus kind of tightens and, and helps build more collagen because you already know starting at age 30 specifically, we start to you know lose collagen and elastin, which is why this is all falling, right? When we start getting towards menopause, menopause we start losing estrogen. Estrogen, um, once it leaves, estrogen is our pretty hormone. So once estrogen starts to leave our body, all of a sudden we sag. That's why I woke up last September, October, and I, I looked pretty good one day, and the next day I woke up and I literally had my face had fallen and I had all these little diagonal lines and this was all caved in and I was like, so I immediately got on Google, why did my face fall? What, what, what's going on here? Hormones. So, you know, it's not enough that we're aging, now we're dealing with, you know, lack of hormones. And I'm not telling you to go on hormone replacement therapy, that's a, that's a very important conversation for your doctor, but I will tell you, since I've been on hormone replacement therapy, um, I wear a patch twice a week and I take a, a low dose progesterone every night. I haven't had a single um, hot flash in a month. I haven't had a single night sweat in a month. I don't wake up smelling like a goat. Um, and I do think my skin's looking a little bit better. Even the skin on my body one day, I looked in the mirror, I tried on a bathing suit and all the skin in my body had just fallen from last August. When I was last in a bathing suit and feeling pretty good about myself for 53, my skin on my legs is hanging and it's like draping. The skin on my arms is like hanging. And again, I need to be doing more exercise, but I am talking like sag city and it's because my estrogen's been leaving. So the hormone replacement therapy has been good for me, and I highly recommend you talk to a, a hormone specialist about that. Um, I would love to hear your experience with hormone replacement therapy because a lot of women fear it. Um, Menopause Barbie, who's someone I've watched extensively on YouTube, I actually like her podcast more than watching her, but she says women's number one um, complaint in, in menopause is the sag. The sag, the sag, the sag. It's so demoralizing and depressing. It just is. Yes, I'm happy to be 54. Yes, I love the confidence and I love the wisdom and I, I think I look pretty good for my age, but the sagging is depressing and I remember my mom used to talk about it a lot, I remember. So that has helped me, but it's never gonna pick my skin back up Never. It's not going to reverse the clock. It's just going to help me going forward. Now, hormone replacement therapy does increase breast cancer a tiny bit, like 1%. Okay, you have to really read the, the studies and not turn to the media, but really read the studies because the studies are, if you don't have a history of breast cancer in your family, um, it's really only like a 1% risk. But if you don't take hormone replacement therapy, then you have a very high risk of heart disease, leading cause of death in women over 60 postmenopause, huge, huge rise in dementia, and a huge rise in osteoporosis. So those three things, I mean, those are debilitating things. I don't want that. So I'm, a, I'm gonna be on hormone replacement therapy probably for life, obviously always getting a 3D mammogram, um, always going back for an ultrasound if needed, um, getting a pap every year and I'm even seeing a geneticist because I do believe one of my grandmas died of ovarian cancer at 52, 53 years old, right about the age I am now. 
but she died when my dad was 10, so we don't have a lot of information on that. But I really want to know um, the geneticist testing. So if, if anything says, you know, abort, estradiol, estradiol, abort, abort, I will. I will. I'm not going to put my health in jeopardy, but to me, a 1% elevated risk of breast cancer over huge risks in heart disease, osteoporosis, and dementia, yeah, I'm real happy with the patch and the progesterone. So anyway, that's all I'm going to talk about for now. Um, you know, the, the problem with fillers that I'm seeing in so many women is the first time they get the fillers, it's beautiful. It is. If you have a good injector, it is beautiful. But the number one thing I hear from plastic surgeons is that filler, they have no idea where it's going to move around. And some might remain in some areas, so it looks really good that first year, and then you go back a year later to kind of go in and do a little bit more. And what if like you still have some in this area, and they put in more, and they don't know it's in that area? And like so women's faces start getting puffy and lumpy. Um, this area is really tricky. And then also what I didn't even talk about is we have a cute little triangular muscle called the cheek pad, right? It's a little triangular cheek muscle. And fortunately, I still have really great cheek muscles. They're just lower than they were, right? Because now we know, but because of this indentation, my cheeks have dropped. So what they do with filler is they won't just go in and fill in that little line. That's what I wanted. And she's like, no, 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 we actually have to kind of do a little bit in the cheek. She's like, now you have volume in your cheeks, so this is good. But a lot of women don't have volume in the cheeks, so we have to go into the cheeks so that the eye doesn't look puffy and the cheek looks hollow. So do you see how like one little, t one little teeny injection leads to, oh, now we have to do this. Oh, now we have to do this. By the way, yeah, we got to do this here. And then you have no idea how that's going to shift and change in a year. You have no idea when you go back for a touch up, how that's going to shift and change. And it's why you look at um, women like Courtney Cox or Nicole Kidman or Madonna, and they have these pencil thin, beautiful fit bodies, but then they have these like faces that look like they're 20, 30 pounds overweight. And it's because they're so full of filler, it looks weird. It just doesn't look right. And then if your face is all like plump and tight, but you've got a bony chest and old hands, like you're not fooling anyone. <laughs> you're not fooling anyone. So I really think the trick is, you know, eating clean, drinking water, getting adequate sleep, wearing pretty makeup. You know, pretty makeup goes a long way. Eyelashes take a little bit of focus off of right here. Like perhaps no one's looking at my gels if they're looking at my eyes, right? You know, cheating a little bit, right? A little bit of makeup, cheating a little bit. Um, of course, good skincare. Of course, you know, a good retinol or a retin-A if you, if you can. You know, these little skin tools can help if you're diligent and use them daily. All these little things can help, but we're never going to reverse that clock. We're just not. We're just not, and we have to stop pretending like we, we can. And I have so many women, um, I mean, heck, just look at my YouTube video on my top foundations or my top concealers. They're the most viewed, the most, you, do you know why? Because women feel like when they wear, you know, concealer or foundation, they look older and they don't want to look older. They want pretty skin. So they're constantly looking. I feel like it's this like never ending quest for the perfect concealer and the perfect foundation. You're never going to find it if you don't take care of your skin first. Because when you have nice skin, you can use very, very sheer formulas and it'll kind of like even everything out and look pretty and skin-like. But anything heavy to hide all the problems you might be having, the larger pores or melasma or sunspots or sag, makeup's not going to hide that. It's only going to enhance it. And I see women really turning to makeup first and you should be turning to skincare first. You should be turning to drinking more water first. You should be turning towards maybe learning a few little makeup tips, you know, play up the eyes so that your skin can be more sheer and natural because I promise you no one's looking at your sunspots. No one looks at mine and I have them. So I hope that helps. Again, I'm not trying to depress anyone. I just wanted to have a really candid conversation about aging and what happens to the face. 
the gels are going to keep get you know hanging more the neck's going to keep everything's going to keep sagging because that's called gravity and that's called loss of collagen and loss of elastin and that just comes with age so we have to either fight it with surgery which is the only thing that's going to work or maybe some intensive laser treatments that cause a lot of downtime and pain and a lot of money or we're gonna have to fight it with just um, accepting it, you know, accepting it and doing the best we can to look and feel our best. And some of you get it. Some of you have a really great attitude for aging, and I love that. And on days where I'm down, I love those of you women out there who just have a zest for life and you don't care about your neck. And then there's those women who, are so focused on the exterior and they're you know really fearing aging and um, I don't get quite to that point but I do have to look at my face every day and it can be depressing watching everything just fall maybe it's just gonna come to the point where I'm like you know what I just probably have to get off social media because it's not healthy for my mindset I don't know we'll see I just I really just take this whole journey day by day um, and and we'll just see where we go but I would love to hear um, comments on your philosophy of aging what's helped you because people do read comments and, and you know glean from that um, if you've had surgery if you are pro surgery I'd love to hear from you because I really do think that that is possibly in my future in the next five years if I if I if I have the funds right if the house is carpeted and the trees are down outside and I feel safe in the house um, maybe we update a kitchen and a bathroom because this house is so outdated you know maybe then I can you know do some surgery to my neck and face but then so many of you are like, please don't, please don't, you're all we have. You know, so many women on, you know, TikTok and, and YouTube and Instagram, they've all had all the work done and so we don't feel like we can relate. So maybe I'm the poster child to the relatable aging woman. I don't know. I don't know if that's my plight in life, but we'll just take it day by day and see. Okay, thanks everyone for watching. Please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe if this has helped. And I really would love to hear your thoughts um, on aging, surgery, injections, um, tools, sunscreen, you know, tretinoin, retinol, all the things. I'd really love to hear everybody's input. Bye until next time.